Today I'm going to speak about icons of evolution, why much of what we teach about evolution is wrong. Let me begin by saying what I think science is. As a scientist myself, it seems to me that science is the search for truth. This is a quote here from Linus Pauling, winner of two Nobel Prizes, and I agree with it completely. Well, science enjoys a very high reputation in our culture, and deservedly so, because science is the search for truth. How does it do it? Science searches for the truth by comparing theories with evidence. A theory that doesn't fit the evidence we modify or discard because obviously it's not a true statement about reality. If we want our theories to be true, we check them against the evidence. That way, our bridges hold up under the weight we put on them. Our patients live through their surgeries in the operating room. Uh, and science uh, builds us computers and other uh, nice devices. And this is why science is so successful and deserves its high reputation. I'm going to talk about evolution today, and one thing I have to do is define what I mean by that. It has many meanings. One of them, uh, for example, is cosmic evolution, the history of the universe. I'm not going to talk about anything that broad. And instead, I'm going to specifically talk about biological evolution which Charles Darwin himself defined as descent with modification. What he meant by that is, first of all, descent. He viewed all beings not as special creations, but as lineal descendants of some few beings that lived in the distant past. Modification, Darwin felt, was due primarily, though not exclusively, to natural selection or survival of the fittest, which acted on random variations in a population to change it. What is the evidence for evolution? When I ask people what the evidence for evolution is, average people, biologists even, surprisingly they all give pretty much the same limited set of examples. And it's because all of us studied evolution from the same textbooks. I recently wrote a book about these examples, or at least 10 of the major ones. I called my book Icons of Evolution because I found that these examples have taken on a life of their own. They've become symbols that go far beyond the evidence and in many cases distort it. So I call them icons. The first that I discuss is the Miller-Urey experiment about the origin of life. Darwin's tree of life, the branching tree pattern that supposedly describes how life has evolved on our planet. Homology in vertebrate limbs, the similarity in bone structures between our hand and a whale's flipper and a bird's wing, for example. Vertebrate embryos, pictures that show that we look very much like fish as early embryos, uh, supposedly pointing to our common ancestry with fish. Archaeopteryx, perhaps one of the most famous fossils in the wor world. It's a, an ancient bird with feathers, but it has a reptilian mouth with teeth and a reptilian tail, and was long thought to be the link between reptiles and birds. Peppered moss, which uh, changed color during the Industrial Revolution when pollution darkened tree trunks on which they supposedly rest. Darwin's finches, birds on the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific, uh, in which a few years back, biologists actually observed natural selection in action during a severe drought. Four-winged fruit flies, genetic mutants that uh, seem to provide, for some people, evidence for how new features can arise in evolution. Uh, the long story of fossil horses, uh, fossils put together in a series showing how our modern horse evolved from a small dog-sized animal, and then the famous ape-to-human icon showing how we supposedly evolved from ape-like creatures. Well, I'm not going to talk about all of these today. I'm going to talk about six. And I chose these six partly because they illustrate the two aspects of Darwin's theory, descent and modification. The first three are Darwin's tree of life, 
homology in vertebrate limbs and vertebrate embryos. And then for modification, peppered moths, starlings, finches, and four-winged fruit flies. I'm going to pick on a few textbooks here today uh, because they're widely used and, of course, because they suit my purposes. Uh, but these are, this particular textbook, uh, Campbell, Reese, and Mitchell, supposedly commands more than half of the market share for introductory biology courses in this country, college courses. And uh, Campbell, Reese, and Mitchell have this to say about descent with modification. Darwinism has a dual meaning. First, that modern species evolve from ancestral forms, that's the descent, and that natural selection is the main mechanism to explain the historical facts. Uh, now, there's a subtle uh, distinction here. The first claim, that is, descent from a common ancestor, is being called a fact. The mechanism is uh, the second aspect of the theory. In another textbook, uh, this is the one I used as a graduate student at uh, UC Berkeley a few years ago, a textbook devoted entirely to evolutionary biology for upper division and graduate students. Doug Fatuma wrote, Descent with modification from common ancestors is a scientific fact, that is, a hypothesis so well supported by the evidence that we take it to be true. The theory of evolution, on the other hand, is a complex body of statements well supported but still incomplete about the causes of evolution, such as natural selection and mutation. And finally, the third textbook I'm going to focus on uh, written by uh, Otis Sirk, Otis Sirk, and Byers. Uh, this is also being used in undergraduate uh, 